capabilities are perhaps one to three decades old. Why? Where did that come from? What was the underlying basis for that particular um, prediction? And this is the problem. It's this type of thinking that has um, started to permeate through uh, various uh, layers of, of various different strata, I guess, of nanotechnology research. Kurzweil. So, uh, the, again, the previous talk is sort of linked into this in that I noticed on one of the slides, although it wasn't alluded to, we have nanoids on one of the, in terms of your, your, your strata of um, organisms. So this is Ray Kurzweil. How many of you are familiar with Kurzweil? Hands up. Okay, as expected. <laughs> Around 2030, we should be able to flood our brains with nanobots that can be turned off and on and which would function as experience being was right. Around 2030, why? Where does that prediction come from? Can, uh, uh, maybe if somebody at the, can tell me at the end of this, then I'll be able to sleep easy at night because I have no idea where it comes at one, three decades which would function as experience beam, was allowing us to experience the full range of other people's sensory experiences. Nanobots will also expand human intelligence by factors of thousands of millions. By 2030, known biological thinking will be trillions of times more powerful than biological thinking. Let's look at that in the context of the state of the art in terms of atomic and molecular manipulation. Richard Smalley, who died, uh, again, it might be a name familiar to you, who unfortunately passed away a few years ago, was one of the um, people who won the Nobel Prize for the discovery of C60 Buckminster Fuller in important nanotrope carbon. He had a long, um, very interesting debate, and this is available on the web if you search for chemical and engineering news, small e Drexler. It's a really worthwhile debate to read. Self replicating mechanical nanobots are simply not possible in our world. It's an interesting debate. Actually, small e made him some mistakes, and I think he was a little bit unfair because he. The common argument put forward by, for want of a better word, the Drexlerites, is that very many straw men have been put up, and then those straw men are attacked when Drexler didn't really say that. Now, in many cases, I have very little time for that straw man argument. In this case, though, Smalley did suggest things, or did um, suggest that Drexler had put forward ideas which really he hadn't. So it's, it's, it's an interesting debate to read. We also invited a couple of people from, um, again, for want of a better word, the Drexler camp to Nottingham a few years ago. And this debate, um, you can, the full footage of this debate is available via a Google video. It makes for a very interesting um, watching. So I've mentioned how a scanning probe microscope works. In the interest of time, I'm not going to go into more details. But the key thing is we've got these two modes. Tip up here. You hope that you're not perturbing the surface. You image. You then move the tip in. And the ways and means of doing that, it's really straightforward to do that. And then you hope that as you're moving the tip across, you interact with an atom or molecule, pushing it across the surface. I don't, I'm not going to focus too much on the Nottingham work, but I'm from the School of Physics and Astronomy in Nottingham. But um, I will just blow a trumpet once. We were the first group to actually carry out controlled manipulation of individual molecules at room temperature. And so these are three, oh, sorry, three images sequentially taken. C60, in, C60 molecule, another one here. So we use the tip to push it up. This, this surface, the, the, the stuff you can see at the background is actually silicon atoms. And in two steps, we leave it, we leave it there. Or in a tr nicely more rendered 3D view, we've got this. I'm not, I'm not clear the movie. So what can we do? Or what can the scanning probe microscope community, what can the, the nanotechnology community do? <laughs> Imaging of single atoms and molecules is absolutely routine. These are individual silicon atoms. This is something called a 7 by 7 reconstruction of silicon. Very, very famous. It's a sort of test bed for um, uh, STM operation. Individual C60 molecules, again on the silicon 100 surface. So C60 is a spherical molecule. We've also looked at, so we're also keen, as are many groups, to look at planar molecules, planar conjugated molecules, to think about um, molecular wiring, for example. And you can put it all together, and people have even indeed, indeed linked these up with virtual reality headsets, because the STM gives you back full three-dimensional information. So this is a raft, a self-assembled, not STM-assembled, but self-assembled raft of C60 molecules over here when it turns around. And the blue... Um, substrate is a, a silicon substrate. So I've shown you already one key iconic image. This was in 1990 when um, Eichler et al. showed that they can manipulate individual xenon atoms and nickel again at 4K, again at a, a very low pressure. And um, I guess if you work at it, you can manipulate the fundamental building blocks 
of matter. Very good thing to spell out is the name of the company that employs you. Um, does your promotion prospects know when you're good? So what we have here, as I said, Zealand Atoms, nickel surface. They then got a little bit um, more advanced and they started to make um, molecular man type figures. So each, uh, each blob here is an individual CO molecule. Seen this one before, and more recently they formed these sort of elliptical quantum corrals, which actually act like whispering galleries, and you can project the, the electronic states of an atom to one from one place to another. So we have got incredibly exquisite control in certain systems over matter. And Eigel's group has also built up um, molecular logic gates from uh, uh, CO molecules, which actually it's like a domino effect. You set up a train of, of, of molecules interacting with each other. So. Let's move back to Drexler. Think about nanotechnology, and of course, you've seen the quote from Kurzweil, and he sees nanotechnology as a key enabling technology for so many um, different aspects of improving the human condition. We've got atomically sharp probes, we've got computer control, we've got mechanical chemistry, we've got atom by atom and molecule by molecule control. All the type of things that Drexler was talking about, and Drexler put forward. So, again, kudos to the man for thinking about this. The problem is the extrapolation. So Drexler focused on diamond and diamondoid, and that's a really important choice for single atom chemistry. Why did he choose diamond? Well, you can take a diamond surface, and he focused on a particular point is you take a diamond crystal, if you cut through it in different um, angles, you'll expose different planes. He chose a particular plane, or a particular couple of planes, <coughs> and then what you do is something very clever you hydrogen passivate the entire surface so it's all inert. Then you use your tip to pluck out hydrogen atoms, to remove hydrogen atoms, and you're left with a radical center. And that's how you do your, your atom by atom chemistry. Now, in the sense that Drexler meant, and this was, uh, Nanosystems was published in 92, it's interesting that even this first step, this extract the hydrogen atom, has not yet been done. So, but his, as I say, his, his strategy is to exploit force-driven atomic scale chemistry, and he called this mechanosynthesis. Synthesis, synthetic reactions, purely by mechanical forces. It's, it's a really radical idea, but as I say, it's something that's happening in the labs now. So we've had STM-driven molecular systems as a synthesis, as I mentioned. We've had atomic force. So in this case, we have another type of microscope which doesn't rely, scanning probe microscope, which doesn't rely on, on measuring a tunnel current, and therefore you can use it on insulators, where you actually measure the forces directly. If you're interested, I can tell you about that if you want to ask questions later. Um, but the key thing is with this atomic force microscope, single atom removal and replacement has actually been demonstrated. So if you compare these two images, this atom has been actually removed in the, in the, the, the lower image. And most recently, we, a group has finally measured the force required to manipulate a single atom or a single CO molecule on a metal surface. So let's just put that in context. When I mention this, you know, by 2030 we're going to have nanobots flooding our uh, consciousness. Let's just have a reality check. The first controlled atomic positioning experiment by Eigler and Schweitzer, where they drew up this IBM logo from individual xenon atoms, 1990. The first measurement of the force, basically sort of a, not quite a, rep a repetition of that experiment, but the, using a different microscope, using a different technique, atomic force microscopy, where you can measure directly the forces, and thus where you're getting close to directions I gave, February 2008. Right? So almost two decades, and we're still at the point where these are experiments in ultra-high vacuum and at very, very low temperatures, cryogenic temperatures, very far away from biological conditions, for example. Another out of interest, and many of you have read Rob Freitas' nanomedicine book. Okay, well the, the idea of, of, of Rob's work is that where, where you take this type of diamondoid nanotechnology and um, actually have these nano um, machines injected into your bloodstream and doing some biology as it were. So, as I say, you take this, in terms of the development of the technology, and I'm not a fan of Kurtz files, exponential growth, and tipping points, as you might have guessed. And <laughs> you compare that estimate to one to three decades for realization of full blown nanofactory technology. This is just so out there as to be um, worrying. So, 
I think the perhaps the reason Aubrey um, invited me here is that there's, because there's been so much scepticism about Drexler's 